So you have the, the key players. You've got the Googles, the Yahoo's, MSN's, AOL, all providing some form of search technology to look through and identify rich media. Um, now you also have the MySpaces and the YouTubes of the world that also have rich media content, most of it consumer generated. But in those situations with the consumer generated content, you don't really see really advanced search capabilities. I, I haven't seen a lot of really advanced search capabilities across the board yet in any of these search engines. So the, the bigger players are relying on metadata and how they get that metadata varies a little bit. It's either associated directly with the file or with uh, like a AOL's new service where they're pulling metadata from multiple sources and, and compiling it together, but that's very structured and that's something you typically would get from a, a production house or a, a mainstream institution that's preparing fully professionally produced video. But with online video, you know, when the kid down the street tapes his buddy skateboarding and puts it up on YouTube, he's not sitting at his computer, you know, hacking out all the very detailed metadata that's necessary to search. So um, at that point, you're relying more on the community to actually help you find and identify that content. So there might be some very basic metadata, but then it's all of the comments and the commentary and the, hey, go look at this video, and, and, and you, you, you might think this is really a funny clip or this is really interesting, you, you would like this and you're, you're getting more of a discovery phase. So that's how I kind of, when I'm looking at search, I kind of see kind of, th kind of three key areas. There's the locating, which is all about metadata. Then there's, um, well, so there's the locating, which is the metadata. Then there's actually the contextual, where we're positioning you within the content to the exact spot. And then there's discovery. That's how you find new content recommended by a friend, for example. So I think pulling all that together is where we're going to see it go and where these search engines really need to move to be more successful in the long run. So metadata is uh, it's, a, it's a part of the workflow process. So when, when somebody films a video in the process of encoding it and transcoding it into the format that it needs to exist, say they need to convert it into Flash or Windows Media, there's a point in that process where there's a bunch of fields, like you're filling out a form on the internet and you're putting in descriptive information about that file and that might include the title, the date, um, some descriptive keywords, it might include an actual physical description, there might be some other data that have to do with the file format, the, the bit rate that it's encoded at, a lot of pieces of information and that's a big part of the professional video production world because they use that internally through content management systems and digital asset management systems. But then the search engines are able to look at that. It's embedded in the file, so they're able to look through that data and, and use that as the, the search results to identify the file. AOL providing a, a meta search for all video content, sure, it's possible, and, and, and you know they're taking a stab at it. Um, you know, it, it seems it seems like a pretty big endeavor, but it's also um, it, it it's in line right now with the quantity of content that we're going to see in video very shortly if we're not seeing already. So there's so much content out there. As a consumer, it's difficult to go interact with all of the individual sources of content all in one place. That's why we see people starting to, you know, use RSS for example. You know, how many websites does people read on a daily basis? In 1996 it was easy because there were probably only five or six sites that you would go to. You know, CNET, CNN, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and it was very easy. You could jump around, but now there are so many sources, there's so much fragmentation, and we're seeing the same thing with video. Um, it, it's difficult to interact with individual brands one on one. So people are aggregating content together and providing consumers access to it through these portals. So that's I think we're going to see that that is a, is a is a good opportunity. Now the challenge for brands and, and content providers is to you know they want to own control you know they want to control the experience. They want to they want to be the point of contact. So what they need to do is really think about the activity of their consumers, what their consumers want, and provide value-added services around um, pr providing video to them and, and giving them the ability to you know, manage clips and, and doing other kinds of enhanced capabilities with managing video and, and kind of build communities around their content so people want to hang out there and stay. And that's when you're going to see you know, people wanting to go to particular destinations for brands and interact with the video there instead. I don't know that that they're doing that much differently, to be honest, and I think that's that's part of the story here right now. Um, is you know metadata is what they're the bigger engines are used to searching on, and and that's 
important, but going forward, um, all of these other communal and social aspects associated with video, tagging, comments, um, and, and blogs, and, and anything out in the social computing world that's pointing to another piece of content, that's going to be important to search well, and right now you're not seeing any of the providers really doing that just yet. 